So now how do we make the transition between the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the writing of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The scholars, they divide this entire process into four levels. First you have al-ilm, which is the all-encompassing knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we already established this before we even talked about creation, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And it, his knowledge is not limited by dimensions, his, not, his knowledge is not limited by place, his knowledge is not limited by time, right? It's established in Ayatul Kursi, which we've already spoken about, and in so many other places. That, Wallahu bima ta'maluna alim, Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. Allah knows everything that you're doing, Allah knows uh, everything that takes place. Nothing escapes his knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused it to be written down. So we go from al-ilm to al-kitabah, the writing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that writing takes place in al-lawh al-mahfuz, and it's already been written. So Allah al-Mahfud is not a book where there's perpetual writing, rather it's already been written. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Hadid, uh, which is the same surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about His knowledge encompassing everything to what goes into the earth and what comes out of the earth. Allah says, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَبْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ That no evil befalls you on this earth or within your own cells except it is in the writing that we have already written before we even brought it into existence. So before it was even brought into existence, it was already written down. Then you have the third principle or the third level, which is al-mashi'a, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as we said, you know, there, th th this, uh, this creator that exists beyond the confines of creation has to have willed the creation to start in the first place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will is of two types. It's divided within two levels. You have what's known as al-irad al-kawniya, which is the universal will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it includes everything you know, that is good, everything that is evil. And I use evil within quotation marks obviously because evil is relative. So everything that is good, everything that's bad, everything is included within this universal will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In essence, you know, irad al kawniya the universal will of Allah, is everything Allah allows to happen. Okay? Then you have the second level, which is a smaller circle. So if you drew a circle, uh, saying the universal will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-irad al kawniya you draw another circle within that circle, and that's called al-irad al sharia which is the legislative will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In essence, it's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do. So it includes prayer, it includes fasting, hajj, zakah, it includes um, you know, obedience to the parents, it includes goodness to your neighbors, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us to do, everything that's deemed good and praiseworthy falls within this category of al-irad al-shari'a. And this is very interesting because Allah tells us in the Qur'an, wallahu la yuhibbu al-fasad. For example, Allah doesn't love corruption, Allah doesn't love disobedience, Allah doesn't love uh, disbelief, Allah doesn't love evil. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still allows some things to persist outside of His legislation for the greater good, for something that we cannot understand and we cannot comprehend. So everything that happens within this, this, uh, this circle of al-irad al-kawniya, of the universal will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has meaning to it, has benefit to it, um, has reason to it, and often, right, we tend to make a judgment on the picture or judge the picture by the pixel. You know, we see very limited things and we say, well, why does Allah let this happen? Why does Allah let that happen? That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decision. That's His will. And Allah knows why He allowed it to happen and everything that would have happened had He not allowed it to happen and so on and so forth. So His will is all-encompassing. However, there's a difference between what Allah tells you to do and what Allah allows to happen. Uh, for the greater good and what falls into the greater picture. And then finally you have al-khalq, the creation. So you have al-ilm, wal-kitabah, knowledge, writing, al-mashi'ah, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then that manifests itself in the creation. And Allah tells us in the Qur'an that everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hayyin, is, is, is effortless. When Allah creates, it's effortless. You know, the word hayyin is different from the word uh, sahil, which means easy, because to Allah, there is no easy or easier. It's not easier for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create you than to create the entire heavens and the earth and the entire earth because to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of it requires absolutely no effort. Allah says, إِذَا قَضَىٰ أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ 
When Allah decides something, when He decrees something, He simply says to it, be and it is. So Amruhu Bain al Kafi wal Noon, as the scholars say, His command, His creation is between the letter Kaf and Noon. And ironically, Kaf and Noon are two letters, and B. B and E are also two letters. But what's amazing about that as well is that the ulama say, the scholars say that notice that Allah says to it, be and it is, meaning it already was, it already exists. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He says be, it comes into manifestation. So it just, it becomes manifest. But it's already there simply by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreeing it. And so we go through these pillars again, al-ilm. Wal kitaba, wal mashia, wal khalq, the all encompassing knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the writing of that knowledge, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which includes His universal and His legislative will, and then finally the creation when it comes into manifest.